All right, let's get one thing out of the way. I am not under any circumstances to be considered a, a rocket surgeon, like an expert on rockets and rocketry and the fantastic complicated engineering that goes in to making one of these devices. And there are plenty of channels on YouTube, great channels, I'll put some links down below that really dig in and, and show you around modern rockets and, and all the intricacies and variations and options and, and engine efficiencies and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm not going to go into the details because I'm, I'm really not qualified to go into the details, but I am a physicist and I want to look at rockets from the perspective of a physicist because there's some very cool physics, very fundamental, important physical lessons we can learn when we examine rockets. And probably the absolute number one thing you can take away from looking at a rocket is conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum is what rules rocketry. It's what makes rockets possible. And really, when you dig into it, when you think about how profound and fundamental this concept of conservation of momentum is, you realize just how pervasive it is. And this is the power of physics, where one little equation, one little concept, one little idea can take you so many different places all across the universe. I find a lot of beauty and power in that, but that's that's a different show. That's a different show about the universality of physics. Here, I'm just talking about conservation of momentum. And when you think about motion, when you break down the mechanics of any kind of motion, not just rocketry, but any kind of motion, you if you think about what's going on, it's actually something really cool. Like if, if I want to walk, if I want to take a step, what does your foot do? Your foot presses against the ground, but then that's not enough. It actually presses back on the earth, right? And you're relying on the friction to keep your foot in place so it doesn't slip out from underneath you. And all the little molecular nooks and crannies rub up against each other to give you that friction. And you push back on the earth and the earth pushes back on you. You know, this is Newton's action reaction. It's all the same ways of expressing the same concept of conservation of momentum. And you move a lot and the earth barely moves at all because the earth is so incredibly much, so much more massive than you, right? And so a lot of mass, barely any velocity, there's the total momentum on one side and then the total momentum on your side, you have not as much mass, so you get more velocity. So you move forward, you move forward. The exact same concept applies motion to motion in a fluid, like in water or the atmosphere. You have something like a propeller that pushes the fluid behind you. Let me go this way. Pushes the fluid behind you. The fluid pushes back on you. There's conservation of momentum there, and you move. Whether it's water, whether it's air, it doesn't matter. The exact same thing happens with rockets. But instead of pushing against something, if you're out in the vacuum of space, there's no air, there's no water, there's no ground, there's nothing to push against except yourself. So how can you achieve movement if there's nothing to push against? Well conservation momentum to the rescue. You can still take advantage of that principle to achieve motion even when you have nothing to push against. And it's the exact same analogy, uh, or it's a, it's exact same as an analogy where let's say you're in the middle of an icy lake, frozen on the top, 100% super slick surface, and somehow you found yourself there. I'm not going to ask any questions. And you want to get to the edge of the lake and you try your normal thing of walking and friction and pushing against the ground, but it's too slippery. So you fall right on your face. So how can you achieve motion in this scenario? Well, you can take something on you like a shoe or something and you can throw your shoe and conservation momentum applies. You throw something and to preserve the total momentum of the system. So when you're just holding the shoe, the total momentum is zero. No one's going anywhere. You throw the shoe that way. Now there's a mass with a velocity that way has to be canceled out. There has to be a mass and a velocity going this way. And so 
you will separate and you will achieve motion by throwing something off of you you can achieve motion and this is exactly why rockets work in the vacuum of space because if you carry something with you in your rocket let's call it a propellant if you carry it with you and then throw it out the back end you will achieve forward motion it's just that simple but of course, actual rockets are a little bit more complicated than that. It's not just a tube with a hole in it that's kind of inefficient. And this is something that Robert Goddard discovered in the 1910s was that you don't just want a hole in the bottom of your rocket, you want a nozzle, a very specific kind of nozzle called a Delaval nozzle named after Gustave Delaval, who invented the thing in 1888, I think. And a nozzle, and this would be a great time for me to have a prop, but, you know, tight budgets, all right? So we're going to use our imaginations here. The nozzle, this very special kind of nozzle, does something very cool to the propellant as it's exiting the rocket ship. First, there is a part where it funnels in to a narrower part called the, the throat. And that narrowing part is very, very important because this fluid, whatever the propellant is, because this fluid is incompressible, it means it can't be squeezed any tighter. Have you ever tried to squeeze a box of water? Kind of hard because fluids are incompressible. Because it can't be compressed as it funnels down into the very narrow opening, it has to speed up to compensate. Because if you have 10 blobs of fluid entering you need 10 blobs of fluid exiting at the exact same rate you need to preserve that flow rate and the only way to do it is if you have 10 blobs coming in slow and then it's 10 blobs coming out really quick out of the funnel so the funnel is used to speed up the fluid now a delaval nozzle has a very special property where in its narrowest part right in the middle of the funnel allows the fluid that's entering it to reach a sonic speed. The sonic speed means that it's traveling at its own sound speed. And fluids that travel at their own sound speed or faster than their sound speed, they become supersonic, behave in totally different ways, like like totally flipped set of rules for subsonic or normal everyday fluids. Now, as the super now supersonic fluid exits the funnel, it's going to expand and expand and expand. But because it's sonic or supersonic, it's actually going to go faster as it leaves, as it re-expands. So this Delaval nozzle is a mechanism, it's a device for converting a hot but relatively slow fluid into a very fast but relatively cool fluid. It, it transforms thermal energy, heat energy, into kinetic energy, into motion of the gas or fluid. And this back end of the nozzle has a very special bell-shaped kind of flare to it. If you've ever seen a rocket nozzle, you're, you're looking at the back end of that long fluted section. It's designed that way because as the gas, so, so let's say the, the, the throat is here, the fluid is coming down here, and it's entering the chamber where the, the bell is, and it starts expanding. It's going to press up against the walls of the bell. Some of the pressing will go perpendicular to the rocket, which is no one cares. It doesn't really help us move. But some of it, as it expands, pushes back up on that bell and gives you an extra boost in forward momentum. So you get some momentum. You get some push, some oomph, just from the fluid entering the throat and being shoved down the bottom, just like you would have a hole in the bottom of your rocket. And you get an extra boost due to the design of the fluted bell-shaped back end of the nozzle itself. So Delaval nozzles are absolutely critical to rocketry because they are an amplifying device for taking the fluid that you were going to use as your propellant and giving it like its maximum possible speed. So it doesn't just leak out of the bottom or shoot out of the bottom. It's like 
child, just look at a rocket going. Like that is the action of the Del- of a Delaval nozzle doing its job to really extract as much motion from that fluid as possible so that from conservation momentum, your rocket gets to move as much as possible. You're not, it, the whole point is to be super efficient and to just get the most out of conservation of momentum. So this was the very basics of momentum. In my next video, I'm going to talk more about uh, the energy requirements of a rocket. So tune in next week. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider contributing to my Patreon campaign, patreon.com slash PM Sutter. It's those contributions that keep all my education and outreach initiatives going. And feel free to subscribe to the channel. Make sure the notification thingy, bell thingy is turned on so you know when I go live once a week with Space Radio. And I'll see you next time. <laughs>